morning, everybody. Um, welcome to uh, this event. I'm really happy to be here. See such a good crowd. So I'm going to talk about names, and uh, in a sense, my own development of names uh, around making. So for me, it started with hacks. This is what I was working on before Make Magazine, a book series. And, and uh, I was actually had the idea that I wanted to take what hackers knew and translate it into tips and tricks that other people could do. Uh, and, uh, you know, by, by some uh, weird state, I didn't want to put an animal on the cover of the book and we ended up with a wrench. Um, uh, which maybe is foreshadowing. But, you know, the idea there was just to collect these, these hacks and sort of uh, out of jargon file and other things kind of came up with this definition that it was a, a non-obvious solution to an interesting problem. So the, these weren't like simple tip, tips and tricks. These were uh, more challenging ones. And I, I really, we built out that series um, we had a number of, uh, of titles in it, and you know, I, I really found myself in this in this event of going back to this book by Stephen Levy about hackers, and and really wanted to reinvigorate what that term meant in culture, because obviously, you know, it's it's used in a very negative way, and most people uh, uh, tend to tend to go there um, and and not go and use it in the way that Stephen Levy was using it. Well. Interesting, one of the books in the series we tried was Astronomy Hacks, and, and the reviews for the books came back and said, great book, but why hacks? You know, astronomers didn't resonate with this idea of hacks. So it was the first kind of, uh, kind of mismatch that I saw there. But then uh, one of the books uh, Rafi Krikorian uh, uh, developed was TiVo Hacks, and, and that really set my mind to thinking about hardware. Uh, this was, uh, you know, if you remember the early TiVos, the, the Unix, I mean Linux machines, people were swapping out drives, updating the operating system, doing a lot of things with them that they would do with a computer. But it also suggested to me that there was uh, a possibility that we would begin hacking hardware the way that we were hacking software. And that, in many ways, was the impetus for the series. And because, to some degree, there's only so many things you can do in books, I began thinking about a magazine as a model for talking about it, and my first idea really was Hacks Magazine, and you know, but a, a collection of hacks. But uh, as I began to play around with it, one of the things we wanted to do was to move from problem solving to projects. And this is an early whiteboard session. Uh, you can kind of see that we're still playing with PVRs, uh, uh, you know, personal video recorders, and other things there. How do you create those? So. You know, but, but Make is, is essentially uh, a DIY magazine, and DIY magazines are about projects, cooking, gardening, magazines, cover, things you get to do. And that, that was my chief interest. So this is David Alberton as our first designer and art director, and you can kind of see on the wall some of the initiatives. I came up with the term Make, and I, I think it's just, uh, maybe just this audience might get it, that's where it actually comes from. It was the third book that O'Reilly published. It was Managing Projects with Make. Um, but Make was this open term, this, this new, I, I felt like we could do anything with Make. And, and so, um, in fact, uh, those of you that know Make, Make was published before there were animals on the cover. It was the third book. But Make files have colons in them. And that's, that's really where the Make colon comes from. Um, <laughs> as a distinguishing graphic representation of the name. So that was our, our first edition of, of Make Magazine uh, in 2005, I believe. And, uh, you know, uh, but in that first edition, um, my welcome in there, you know, I, I used the word makers, uh, you know, just in the first paragraph, uh, you know, four or five times. And, you know, it, it became um, clear to me that 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 was a word we wanted to use to refer to our audience. Um, that it was, it was partially through verbally talking to people about make, um, people began to use that term back. And, and so um, we did, I think we did a pretty good job of that. That in a sense was the container of the meme as opposed to the make, make colon is the container of the brand. And, and th that began to spread. 
Um, we did some, uh, a book on, on makers uh, just to profile them as individuals and what they were doing. And, uh, and then, you know, came up with Maker Fair and using maker because, uh, again, this was a term that this is a fair about makers. It's by and for makers. And, uh, you know, again, the question I get asked most of all is why the E on the end of fair? And uh, I don't know, because there are five letters in maker and it, and it has a little balance uh, visually. Uh, someone came up to me after and says, do you know the word fair in French means the verb to make? So I didn't know that, but that's a nice coincidence. But it also has connotations of, uh, of uh, Renaissance fair and other things uh, that I think are fun. Um, and again, I didn't do make fair. Part of it, I just didn't like the sound of it. Um, but Maker Fair, and I, I think this is what I want to introduce in the conversation, has spread around the world. Um, we do two Maker Fairs, the one this weekend in, uh, at Queens, in Queens at the Hall of Science and the one in the Bay Area. But there are 60 Maker Fairs around the world and they're self-organized and uh, people do them. But like the open source hardware group, we had to figure out how do we spread this because we can't organize all of them. And we came up with a licensing model. Um, we did want to control what Maker Faire uh, was or have some control over it. Um, we didn't want a rock concert promoter to come and say, I'm going to do Maker Faire and have all the great bands that I want to have there and just use the name. So um, we came up with a playbook, which is really documentation for how to do a Maker Faire. And this is, uh, we tried to share what we know about doing it. We also tried to encourage people to to do small fairs, that they were um, less problematical and, and we didn't really want people to, to fail at that. But um, it is, uh, I think this is about our third year of, of organizing these fairs uh, this way and they've really uh, grown quite nicely. Um, similarly, um, hackerspaces was an independently evolved term that uh, you know, began to be used um, pretty widely uh, um, and, you know, is kind of a parallel phenomenon with Maker Faires in the magazine. And, you know, there's the spread of, of hackerspaces. But something has begun to happen there. Um, I started using Makerspace just, mm, you know, not that intentionally, but I thought, oh, let's use Makerspace for educationally oriented hackerspaces. Um, because I'd like to see them go into places that uh, maybe the hackerspaces aren't. Um, and I thought I could maybe hold on to that education association, but um, over the last, and, and I set up a program, this a DARPA program, to get makerspaces into high schools, and we used uh, the makerspace term there and set up a website for it. But then I began running into places, the Dallas makerspace, and uh, others uh, were really widely using this term, and certainly uh, it's, it's a term of preference. Uh, again, I, I think it's generic. Um, fab labs and, and uh, hacker spaces and such can all be considered something, and maker space is not a bad term. But I think it, it does represent, we're beginning to see a variety of organizational models uh, that uh, I think is pretty exciting in this space. Uh, Artisans Asylum in, in Somerville, Massachusetts, or uh, uh, MakerWorks in Ann Arbor, Michigan, are sort of somewhere between the tech shop model and a hackerspace model. And I think we're going to see a lot more growth in that area. So just to leave you with a thought, having a good name is important. Um, it's a handle. It gives people something to talk about. Uh, uh, I think it is what you want to protect uh, in the sense of your business, in the sense of a, a, a nonprofit. Uh, you want to think about what names you're using. And I think one of the, sorry, one of the issues, I think, for me, which drove me towards uh, using maker versus hacker was it felt more open. It felt more inclusive of of members of the community that might not identify if I called it Hacks Magazine or Hacker Fair. So, um, and, and even the choice of fair was a, a notion to push it beyond a convention or a business conference to make it something that was family oriented. And if you've been to Maker Fair, you see how many kids are there. And I think that's one of the most exciting things for all of us is that, that we are investing in a sense in the future of makers. So there's one other name I want to give you and share with you that Mayor Bloomberg last night announced that this is now called Maker Week and we are all part of it. So, um, 
so anyway, uh, that, that is, that's what I wanted to share with you, the kind of the evolution of make and, and, and its origins in hacking. But I, I, I think I just, in, in spirit of knowing what's happening here today, um, this make, maker movement and the maker community can support lots of different uh, communities within it, a lot of different approaches, and, and I hope we all sort of uh, think about that sort of, uh, our bias should be towards being open and including more people, more models, more, more ways of doing things. None of us have the answers here. So thank you very much, and I hope to see you at Maker Faire this weekend.